Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are digging into a uh, problem that I have uh, had to solve in the past at a previous home. And I'm doing repeating the same thing here in our new home, which is solving this uh, rotten egg smell, eggy kind of smell uh, in the hot water. Our cold water doesn't really have uh, any smell to it. Um, it is hard water here. We are in Michigan. There's a lot of iron in the water and other things like that. But our hot water especially has a very strong smell. I mean, when you take a shower, you, you can walk into the bathroom afterwards and it just, it smells like, like rotten eggs kind of. It, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a pretty strong smell with the hot water. So we need to get rid of this. The solution to this problem, as I have dealt with in the past, is to replace the anode rod with a powered anode rod. So uh, the, the anode rods that are in these things, there's a, a chemical issue that happens with bacteria and the hot water and other things in certain kind of water chemistry that causes an issue and causes this smell. And so the solution is this powered anode rod. Uh, um, this is the one that I am using. There will be a link to this in the description of the video, uh, as well as a link to the previous video I did where I went through this very same, very same process. So I'm gonna do it on a different kind of water heater here, but uh, same process. So this anode rod uh, serves the same purpose, which is to prevent the, the corrosion of the inside of the water heater. Um, and and the, the anode rod kind of uh, takes that that uh, that corrosion instead of the, the hot water tank. Um, it also gets rid of the rotten egg smell, and it does use a small voltage. So it's a super small, I think it's a couple watts that this thing uses um, to solve this problem. And so uh, this will work in, in, as far as I understand it, any standard water heater. And so we're gonna go through the process of just pulling the old one out and then putting the new one in, and this should solve our problem. So it's a pretty simple process. The hardest part is getting the old anode rod out. Sometimes they're they're kind of corroded into place. And so that's probably gonna be our biggest struggle today. Uh, and so we'll uh, hopefully be able to get this sucker out and, and, uh, and solve this issue. I'm sick of the smell. So uh, let's dig in and see what we gotta do. So here is our water heater. It's a Richmond. Uh, I believe it's a 40 or 50 gallon. I can't remember exactly the uh, the, the size. I don't have to look. But uh, no matter what, uh, all these water heaters, uh, A.O. Smith, whatever other brands out there, um, they're going to be very similar. Whether you have the uh, low efficiency type uh, like this with the, with the uh, steel vent on it or you have a power vent or PVC vent uh, model, the anode rods are, are the same thing. So the process should be very similar. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, find your gas valve. And again, these are you know, obviously different processes for different ones, but we're going to just make sure that it's turned off. Don't want the hot water heater uh, coming on while we're so, uh, you know, doing this, uh, this process. And then we're also going to find our, our incoming valves. This is the cold side uh, coming in. And then this is the, the hot water on the other side going out. Uh, you can pretty easily determine which one's which, but your cold water side should have a valve on it somewhere. So we're going to turn this off. So we don't want any more water coming into the water heater while we're doing this process. And if you don't have a valve here, then you're gonna have to find, you know, trace this this back and, and, and find your, your main well turn off and turn off the water to the whole home. But, and the next thing you're gonna do is locate the drain. Some of the drains are gonna be, you know, door, towards the bottom with some type of valve. Uh, some of them are like this, they're plastic, which actually aren't as good, uh, but, uh, and we're gonna hook a hose to this next and we're gonna find a place to drain this. Now you can drain the water tank into a floor drain. Uh, you may have a floor drain in the basement somewhere or you can drain it outside out a back door or something like that, which is what we're gonna do in our case. So we've got the hose hooked up and turned the valve, but you're going to have kind of a vapor lock in here because there's air stuck in the, in the top here and it's not going to allow the water to drain out. So we're going to open a couple of our uh, hot water valves throughout the house and let some air kind of uh, suck through. Also, I'm going to go up to the top uh, floor of the house, the upper levels, and open all the hot water valves there on all the faucets. That allow all the pipes to drain out and uh, you can hear the, the air sucking through. Now I like to drain the uh, hot water tanks out completely. Uh, I do this for a couple reasons. It's nice to get any sediment that maybe have collected at the bottom. We have really hard water here and I believe that the previous owners didn't run the water softener very often. And so I know that there's a lot of rust and other buildup in the bottom of this. And so I'm gonna try to flush this out and get as much of that debris out of there as possible. Uh, but really, if you don't wanna do that, um, you only have to really drain the, the water level down, maybe just a little bit in the tank. You don't have to empty the whole thing out because we're just gonna take the anode rod out of the top here anyway. So. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and drain ours all the way out and I'm actually going to flush it a little bit by allowing some, some cold water to kind of enter in as we go. Um, and, uh 
kind of stir that up a little bit in there and uh, allow the, the debris to, to get kind of sucked out and, and uh, flush that all outside. So somewhere on the top of the water heater, there's going to be a port. Sometimes they're covered with, uh, with foam or, or uh, insulation of some sort. You need to kind of cut it away. Um, but uh, you want to look for, for the port where that anorod is. I can see the, the top of it. Let's see if I can get you guys. I don't know if it's light enough, but you can see it in there. And so that's what we're going to be pulling out. But in order to get my socket on, I'm going to try to see if I can get this surround uh, pulled away from the uh, from this area. So I'm going to try to get this pulled up. This water heater wasn't really installed very well, and it looks like it, at some point there's been some rollout of the uh, uh, heat here, and it's actually melted this a little bit. But that's okay. So I'm just taking that surround out. Double check, make sure we have the right socket. So, yep. So this is, uh, generally these these anorods are pretty standard. It's a, it's a one and one sixteenth inch socket. Uh, generally you probably don't have this in your toolbox because it's a pretty big one. So I'll actually put a link in the description to uh, one of these. You can just pick one up on Amazon, have it all delivered at the same time. Um, this is a pretty decent one, uh, Craftsman. But I uh, wanna get that in there. And uh, generally, you, you can, I might be able to do this without the extension. It just depends on how deep that they're in there. So this one's actually not, not that deep inside. The other thing you can try is I got these uh, adapters for this, uh, my impact. It's a battery powered impact, so it's not that strong. So we'll see if this, uh, we'll get it out here. So that's a no, but a lot of times that will loosen it up just enough. So now we'll get our, uh, our breaker bar on here and really give it some torque. So I have this bar that's just a piece of three quarter inch pipe shoved onto my, uh, my ratchet, my socket wrench here. And this has come in quite handy for quite a few projects. like that was all the leverage we needed still draining the water here at the same time that I'm working on this so and here is the source of the rotten egg smelling water uh, you can smell it, uh, just the, how this reacts with the, with the water chemistry, certain water chemistry, this magnesium, it, it just stinks. It smells like rotten eggs, this whole thing does. And that's what causes the, the water to smell like that, all, the, all this debris and stuff that uh, flakes off of this thing. And then it ends up sitting at the bottom of your hot water tank, and then it just continues to make the water smell. So we'll get this, uh, this will go in the trash, actually, and we'll get the new, new one popped in, and we'll be back in business without smelly water. Well, there's a lot of debris that ended up on these threads, so I just grabbed my toothbrush. I'm gonna just clean this out a little bit. Uh, I just want to make sure we get a good thread connection on these. Just gonna drop this one in here, get it tightened in. Obviously, just want to make sure it's not cross-threaded and make sure it threads in there nice. So the only bummer about this is that the head on this is actually a different size. So it's not a one and one sixteenth inch. It's actually a 33 millimeter, I believe. Um, it tells you in the instructions. So and I'll put a link in the description to that socket also, or you can just use a uh, adjustable wrench, which is what I'm using to uh, tighten it on. I don't really want to over tighten it, so I think that's tight enough.
So we're ready to turn the cold water back on, but before you do that, make sure you go shut the faucets off that you turned on earlier around the house because you're gonna get a lot of uh, spurting and stuff like that at first. So we're gonna turn this, uh, this back on kind of slowly. And we're just gonna make sure a couple things. Number one, we wanna make sure that our drain doesn't leak. Sometimes when these are opened and then closed again, they can leak, they get debris stuck in them and stuff like that. So just wanna kinda of keep an eye on your drain, make sure that it's not, not dripping. We're also gonna keep an eye on our uh, new anode rod connection in there. And so I'll actually get a light and I'll shine it down on there once the water heater's full to make sure that that's not leaking either. So I've got a utility sink down in the basement just close by. So I'm gonna crack the hot water uh, valve here and just let, it's gonna be a lot of air coming out for a little while, but I'm just gonna crack it because it's gonna be spurting a lot. There's gonna be a lot of air in the lines we gotta clear out. So we'll just let that go until we see water. So as we get to the, to the water here, the air gets cleared out. You're gonna see a lot of dirty water. So same thing in the uh, furthest away sinks, you just want to start off slow and you're going to get some dirty water after the air comes through. That's all stuff that was in the hot water tank or in the pipes, so it's good to get that cleared out anyway. And if you have a lot of debris in your hot water when you first turn it on, you might want to check your faucet filter sometimes. See we've got some rust and stuff in there. You can kind of tap those out and a lot of times I'll just rinse them. Looks like no leaks. So now of course depending on your type of uh, hot water heater you'll need to relight the pilot if you have a pilot, standing pilot type or some of them might be a hot surface igniter, electronic ignition, uh, just depends on your, your type. So if you have a, a button that says pilot usually somewhere here where it says it on the, on the valve where you have to push it to light the pilot that uh, means that you have a pilot. And so we're going to turn this to the pilot position and we'll get our pilot lit and then fire this back up. So generally we'll just start off, just turn it to low. I'll leave it there for about uh, maybe half an hour or so, maybe an hour, and it'll get the water heated up to at least a, a warm level and then I'll turn it back to where we have it normally at the hot level. So uh, we'll just let it kind of warm up here. We'll keep checking on it, make sure everything's good. Well, the water heater's been running for a little while here and uh, water is hot and it doesn't smell. So mission accomplished for uh, the powered anode rod uh, installation here today. So hopefully you guys get some uh, get information out of this if you're looking or if you have if you have this issue uh, man it was a it was a big deal we, we moved into our first house that had this issue uh, about five six years ago back at the farm uh, it was uh, it was a it was a problem like the girls didn't want to take showers it was like no one wanted to the hot water to smell when you did dishes and everything else and it was uh, it was all we didn't want to have people you know when people came over you like had to explain why the water smells and it just it was kind of a kind of a pain so this solution uh it's not super expensive and uh you know again all the stuff's available on amazon uh, which is where i ordered this stuff and uh and it solves the problem and then we've never had the issue again i mean we're at our old house for about five years the issue never came back never had another problem with it so uh so if you guys are looking to solve the problem this is the solution that i have found and uh, i would recommend that you guys uh, uh take tackle the project yourself it's not too difficult so some of you may be wondering what some of these other tubing piping and things that are around here this actually is a uh, they used to have an outdoor wood boiler at this house that used to heat the hot water and so these are disconnected tubes above my head here that uh, that used to do that so in case you were wondering what all the extra pipes were don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video of course share this with friend family if uh, you know somebody who struggles with this issue and of course if this is your first time here to the ssl family dad channel we'd love to have you subscribe and follow along lots of diy projects fixing things growing things we do some gardening stuff and homesteading and uh, wood cutting and and uh, all kinds of other things whatever you, whatever you can imagine around a, a small homestead and so i'd love to have you guys tag along for those things coming up and as always guys thanks for watching have a good one